Hello YouTube and welcome to yet another video. So in this part two video, uh, I'm going to play another game versus John Bartholomew. And I really, really didn't stand a chance in the first game. I was down too much on time and I busted, my, my position just busted right open there. But I'm going to say this, I had a really nice position before that, although he had a much better position. He had all the, like, I had many weak points in that um, position and he just exploited them so perfectly. But yeah, now we're going to play a second game where I'm going to be black and he's going to be white. And I'm going to ask for that rematch and whenever he is ready, we're going to start another game. So this is going to be terrible. Uh, he's probably going on and on about weaknesses and stuff like that on his channel and how you shouldn't get too low on time and maybe he's even talking about don't get yourself into a fork or into a pin <laughs> i really believe that that's what he's talking about right now uh, but i'm not sure we're not streaming we're doing doing this dual commentary so it's not as simple as just checking in on, it, on him Although I could ask him on the chat though, um, or send him a message on another platform. But yeah, that was just a terrible first game. So let's do a quick recap for those of you who didn't see that um, first one. I opened up with e4 and we all got in here way, way slowly. But finally, after bishop to e2, he seizes the moment, rook to c8, and that is a really strong move. After d3, g6, bishop to f4. I really, I really got into a bad position here. Uh, and rook e1 is probably just too slow. I could have gone for e5 here, busted open his position, and probably I should have. Uh, that should be what I intended to do, but... By playing my bishop to f4 in the previous move and also that is just a nice move if it takes i'm going to take back and i have a solid position and if he doesn't take if he plays let's say d5 i can take the knight so that's definitely out of the question and if he moves the knight let's say to h5 um, i can simply bring my bishop back to g3 and after he takes i take he can take, yes, he wins a pawn, but then I can break up with d4, I think. Probably not d4 actually, but yeah. Uh, so after this, this rook e1 move, I think it's too slow, and rook d2 just got way off. Um, yeah, and after these couple of moves, I think a4 was a good move. Uh, it weakens b3 though, and he really exploits that, although not um, not in a good manner, but like, like he has his threat of going to b3, that's what I'm saying when I'm saying in not a good manner. Like he doesn't actually have that threat, but he, the threat is a possibility. Um, so bring my rook onto d1 was not possible. So now I'm just shuffling my knights here, and finally, boom, I was in time trouble, and I didn't have much of a choice. Uh, I could have gone back and lost this pawn, uh, but I <laughs> really wasn't looking for gaining anything out of that pawn. Uh, I wouldn't have, so I was just playing on a couple more moves, and then I just resigned, because this pawn on d3 will get... It will get me crushed. So yeah, um, that's that's a really really fun uh, game and probably an, inst an instructive one too. We could have played on. Um, I could have played this move in which he would have taken and I would have had to go back to f3. But after c4. Yeah.
So yeah, there it goes. <laughs> so now we're in the, our second game, and he is probably going to go for d4. I'm guessing he will because he is always in. Uh, yeah, he always wanted me to play d4 him myself. So this is going to be awesome. I'm going to play e6 just because I can and because I want to. <clears throat> Now for e6, I'm going to also play g. Uh, I mean b6 in some way or another. But let's try to take out the big guns. Let's bring out the big guns, guys, and hope for the best. Let's hope they can fire something more than firecrackers. Let's bomb this board right here with a bazooka or nuke it, probably. Yeah, let's nuke this. <laughs> let's go here. <sighs> All right, then we're gonna give this check. Now, after knight to c3, I'm gonna play d5, and this is a very standard position. He plays bishop to d2. Wow, that's actually not <laughs> expected, but okay. I could play knight to c6 here. Um, and why shouldn't I play that? After knight c6, knight c3. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. He probably has some nastiness going on if I play this move. <laughs> I don't see it though. But it's probably not good. I should, it's probably better to just capture on d2. Uh, but yeah, this is this is fun. Bishop to d2. That is a first. I think that's the first time I've ever seen bishop to d2. I really do believe that that's it. That is my first time seeing that move. At least in a game that I've played myself. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, after this second game. We are going to get John live and we're going to talk to him a bit about what went wrong in uh, the games and how things might have continued if I place my bishop back to d, d, d7 um, or something like that. And we're going to ask him, yeah, what are we going to ask him really? Maybe we should ask him about his love life. Just like, how is your love life these days? <laughs> so I really want to play b6 because that really gives me a strong diagonal there. And if I play something like d6 or d5, it kind of stops this diagonal from happening. Um, and this e6 move that I did also prevents my bishop from getting out anytime soon. So I'm thinking I'm going to play b6 and that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. And also notice that if I if I, he plays a3 and I have to bring my knight back to c6, he could go for something like d5, but then I can bring my knight back to e7 after I take. So probably he'll go for g2 himself. That's what I'm thinking at least. But he wants to get rid of his c4 pawn anyways. Trade it off for my b pawn I presume. So playing c5 for instance might be a good idea actually. Because I can't really take that pawn. Yeah, now he goes on with playing e4. Alright. <clears throat> so should we play bishop back to b7? Then he's definitely going to play a3. Or maybe even queen to b3. 
Or I, I'm guessing a3. Or he could play e5. That might also be something that he considers. Hmm. I really want to play my bishop out on b7. But after e5, I might have to bring my knight back to g8 and onto g7. Uh, now that takes a couple of moves to achieve. So that's why I'm curious about playing d6 or if that's going to have a role. To play if I play him, I hit knight back to c6 after that, and he plays d5. Captures, captures, and I can't really capture that with my knight. So this knight goes here, and <laughs> yeah, probably d6 is the better move. Let's do that, actually. It weakens a lot of squares around on the queen side, yes. And John would definitely have something to say about that. <laughs> uh, but I really don't like this e5 move. And I really think that I should aim to block some of his pawns into the uh, center, not getting too much space there. He already has more space than I do, so I should. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh... So why am I even playing? I can't even do shit right here. <laughs> I'm losing so bad. What the hell am I doing? Queen to a4. Kicks and giggles, eh? So placing my knight back, queen captures, bishop here. The queen has to go here. Then I can bring my bishop here. <sighs> so after this move, he can't really take it, but he can play d5. Yeah, let's bring it back. That's why I shouldn't play d6. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really, really don't think in this game at all. Yes, there we go. D5. And if I take, he should take with his pawn there, opening up for his bishop. Um, yeah. This is simply just lost. But we're going to play on in this second game. This really went... Much better than I expected it to as well. <laughs> wow. I'm going to blame the nerves. Blame the nerves. <laughs> okay, so let's just castle. I'll let him take. I don't think he's going to take with the queen. Although I've been wrong before, haven't I? <laughs> so much for the fun, guys. <laughs> wow. So, first time I met John uh, when he was in Norway, um, like seven or eight months ago, probably even more. 
We played some 3 plus 2 games. And I actually got, I think, one or two games where I managed to get a decent position. But this is just too much. I don't get any positions out of this. Okay, so he takes with the queen. And what should I play? If I play here, he can play his queen here or here. Probably queen back to c4. But we have to do it because we have to defend this brook. So that's that's what we're gonna do. But <laughs> queen a4, guys. Wow. I really didn't see that, but I, I don't feel like I'm seeing anything. I was prepping for this match by uh, solving some chess tactics, but <laughs> um, not solving tactics from the openings. Mm -hmm. Let's bring, bring our rook to e8. <laughs> Now most of you guys are probably laughing your heads off. <laughs> and me too, me too. This is this is too much. And I don't know why, but it feels much better. It feels much worse to do this mistake when I play John than when I play a player at my level. And that's so weird, that's so not logical. <laughs> It really isn't. <laughs> so weird. So weird. But all right. So let's play a6. <laughs> oh my god. I really enjoy this. So now he's just frustrated that I gave up in the first game, but not here in the second while down a piece. <laughs> I'm betting that that's it. I could play here, although probably just brings the knight back. <laughs> Let's play b5. Let's play c5. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take. So international masters are notorious to um, make mistakes. They have a reputation of making a lot of mistakes in the middle game. So that's what I'm going to exploit right now. He's going to make a lot of mistakes and I'm going to just win this. Totally. Let's bring our queen to e7. Probably it's just going to play rook f to e1. <laughs> oh my. I can't get it out of my head that I actually hung that piece. Like, oh, d6 is a good move, but John would have definitely said that that was a bad move. And see there, exactly, that's exactly why John would say it's a bad move, because it is a bad move. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I really enjoy it. It's so much fun. 
But the great thing about chess is that you can actually have a lot of fun with it. And if you have a lot of fun while playing, why why bother resigning, right? <laughs> Let's play knight to g4. Oh man, oh man, oh man. I haven't lost this bad since, like, ever. Maybe in a tournament in Jovik. That is, that's in a town near my city. <laughs> Knight to d5, that's a cool move. Nice looking. Fresh move. So let's go here. So if I were to take that knight um, by capturing, I would lose even more because if this knight were to hang in also my queen. I could play my queen to d7, but I don't know. Maybe he could just play h3. Like, I think that would just be too much for my position right there. Although I am a pawn, uh, not a pawn, a piece down. It would just be too damn much to handle. But I'm going to give up any second now, guys. It's really not much to play on with. I really don't have anything to play for in this game. He has all his pieces on the optimal squares. And yeah, it's just <laughs> too much um, to handle. <laughs> so. <laughs> I could bring my knight back, just be a real, real asshole. Um, so if it takes, I can take this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying with that move. <laughs> really, lots of fun. So yeah, I'm so, I'm this short of. Uh, Resigning. So knight to e5, knight captures and knight captures and pawn captures back, or knight here, queen captures, knight captures there. Yeah, okay. So if I do this, he can actually take there, and I have to take with check. Yeah. Hmm. I could bring my other rook around also. Let's do that. Let's pre move queen capture c6. And now I'm really just um, hanging on to a thread. I don't have any expect expectations of winning. Right now I'm just curious to see how he finishes this off. And <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun to see how he reacts when I play d6. And we can ask him that um, after this game. <laughs> Uh, so much fun. So probably rook to c1 here. Although he might want to gang up on the d6 pawn. That's a nice thing about John. He doesn't make a threat if it's less good than 
another threat. So yeah, here it goes. So I'm going to take, he's going to take, I'm going to take, and he's going to take back. But yeah, I don't have much of a choice. I can do this, but then he can take my knight. So I'm going to have to play knight captures here. <clears throat> And maybe even has some sacrificial uh, opportunities here on h7 <laughs> to bring out both the, of these two. Although that wouldn't lead to mate though, because I could take it. <laughs> but that could be fun actually to play out. Like a queen versus two rooks. That could be fun. He's not going to go for that though. He's much more precise than that. <laughs> Queen A4 check. <laughs> so I don't know what he's thinking about actually there's well there is something to consider because he if he takes I can take back and I have uh, he can't take this pawn with his queen but maybe that's what he's thinking about actually. So takes, 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 um, and then check. No, he can't do that. So no. <laughs> but rook c1 seems like partly a good move. Also bishop to e4 seems like a really good move. So after bishop e4, I um, think I'm going to have to take on f3, and he's going to take back with his bishop. Uh, and then I can give a check, trade down, but a queen and a rook versus a queen, rook and a bishop is really just so hard to play. But I hope John also laughed a bit when he could play queen to a4. Probably not, actually. He is too much of a gentleman. He was probably sitting there like, now we made a really big mistake because I can play queen to a4 instead of saying, <laughs> oh my god, John is hilarious. Maybe he even considers capturing on d6 <laughs> that would be fun if he if he does that this will be so fun but of course it doesn't work it's it's just giving up a queen for nothing but still well not for nothing though uh, i take here or well, i can give this check first and then take back and after i take back he can capture on h7 i take he takes, uh, but then I have this check. 
before I take on d6. So that's actually losing for him. But it it must be considered in every single possible way. Although I think that's that's the main line of that um, variation. Like it's it's kind of straightforward if you think about it. Or maybe he's just waiting for his time to get as low as possible to actually give me a shot. I don't think that's the case. I don't. I do not think that's the case. All right, bishop captures h7. So now I'm really in for it. He has actually found some way of making this work. So am I going to capture on h7? I thought about him actually doing this, uh, but I didn't really think that it would work. But he has found something, so we're going to, we're going to have to calculate a bit ourselves. So king captures h7, then knight captures e5. Uh, if pawn captures e5, then queen captures d8, rook captures d8, rook captures d8. And there's two rooks versus this queen. And if <laughs> king captures h7, knight captures e5, pawn takes right away, he can simply take on d8. No, that was the previous line. So if rook takes, and then rook takes, pawn takes, he can simply take there. Um, yeah. So if I take, he takes there, I take, he takes, I take, he takes, then I'm a rook down. And if I take here, knight captures, pawn captures. Yeah, let's just take and see what happens. I'm not... Uh, like, I'm confident I'm going to lose this. Anyways. Uh-huh. So that's his idea. Going for this d8 rook. That's clever. Very clever indeed. I could go to g6. And then queen to g5 and king back to h7. Um, and that's probably what I have to do, I think. So king to g6. If the queen goes to g5, I move my king back to h7. <clears throat> and then he takes... Um, he takes, and yeah, there's really not much that I can do. It's still hopeless after king g6 because this queen actually covers the d8 square anyways. So king g6, queen to g5, king back to h7. Um, but, yeah, and then captures. And then if I play something like f6, he has queen to g6 check. Hmm. And his queen is covering the c1 square as well. 
<laughs> Such a ruthless player. He's so strong. Wing back here meets this. And if I take, I can't even capture that rook back because of a checkmate here. So after he captures, capture there, he can take. And I take, he takes. And I still lose a rook. I'm going with king g6. Let's play this out. Now king, queen to g5. Oh, really? He can do that. Anyways, all right. <laughs> I thought he might play queen to g5, but he has everything covered right now. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely going to be a rook down anyways. So it captures, the queen captures on d8, not even bothering uh, capturing this rook first. If I take here, he's going to take, yeah. <laughs> so fun. I really, really like that move. Knight captures e5 right away. <laughs> wow John you should really really be proud of yourself crushing your student like this <laughs> could go here now if he goes there I could try for rook to g5, <laughs> and after g3, I have nothing. That is so cool. Knight captures e5, okay. So, I think I'm just going to resign this now. I said that I would play this out, but I thought that he <laughs> would play queen to g5, so that uh, this would be more fun. But this... Didn't become fun, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's resign. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, so d6. <laughs> d6 is a great move in this position. Um, there we go. So probably I should have played my bishop out to b7 right away. But I didn't. And yeah, if we were to take with this queen here, then probably I could have stood some chances because this queen is so off. So maybe I could have played, let's say, a6. And this queen is awkwardly placed at least. Although I can't exploit it, that it's not uh, doing much. He can even play this move. But yeah, um, let's just refresh that. And d6 just is is just terrible. But I fought on. I uh, I flexed my muscles in this game for sure. <laughs> Not at all, but he is just such a great player and it's really nice to just watch him make those moves. Like if I would have gone here, he could have just retreated to e4. And this king is awkwardly placed and he's getting another pawn as well. <laughs> so e5 was really a strong move. Um,
yeah e5 was a really strong move let's just go back and i thought he could uh or would sacrifice at some point at h7 but i didn't realize that, that was right here and now in this particular position but wow that's just tremendous tactic tactical skills by john Bartholomew. although it's kind of straightforward but still it's uh, really nice to see those tactics in action and if i were to play my king down to g8 he could have still just taken this and if i take with a rook he can simply capture back and this is a mate and if let's say king to g8 knight captures and pawn captures then rook captures rook captures queen captures and it would still be a rook up but what i thought he would play not knight captures e5 right away um in this position right here i thought that queen g5 was a great move and that is the alternative but knight captures e5 is so much more direct uh in a sense <laughs> So yeah, this is what I thought would happen. King back to h7 and then capturing. And then I thought, yeah, I might have this in. But I realized that queen, the queen is covering c1 there. So I don't stand a chance in this game. I didn't stand a chance in anyone. So John, John just said that he will go on to skype right now and we will talk a little while before he has to run off to something completely different i believe uh but yeah let's let's uh, let's just ask him what he thought about our games together so you have the game right here the standard board and he's joining us in just a second i'm just going to drink some coke ah and there we are okay let's call john oh <laughs> He actually hasn't logged on yet. He is getting ready, but <laughs> he isn't there quite yet. So let's just wait for one more sec. And this was fun. This was really fun. Although uh, I didn't stand a chance and I didn't really make a big challenge out of it. <laughs> it was still quite fun. Uh, and I should have spent a little more time in that second game to check that d6 were actually playable, for sure. But I did not, and it pays it paid off for John to uh, to have that. Where are you at, John? Is he having trouble? I think he's writing to me right now on uh, on another chat. <laughs> Maybe he has some difficulties logging on. I'm not sure. But that was really, really fun to actually, yeah. There we go. So he's online and we're going to call him right now. Okay. Hello, John. Hey, hello. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Very good. How about you? I'm doing well. Thanks. So these two games were really, really quite um, annoying to play against you because I literally <laughs> didn't see Queen A4 in the second game there. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I figured so. Um, I was saying probably you should just castle there. Yeah, your knight is sort of weirdly placed, but you're still in the game. 
Yeah, uh, I I was thinking like Bishop B7 was quite good all, uh, too, but I, I said to myself, in the game, uh, as we played along, I said to myself, um, I should play Bishop B7, but probably, nah, I don't like him playing E5, so I, I, I would just play D6 to stop that, then I can put, uh, bring my knight onto D7 later. Uh, so mm. I, I, that was where I was going when I played D6, and then one second later after I played it, I said that uh, this is this is probably a move that John would say that does not mean. Uh, or if that <laughs> yeah, I was would commenting say on my video that <laughs> I was but, commenting on my video that it's a really unfortunate blunder because sometimes when you lose a piece like that, you can somehow get some sort of compensation because your opponent has to waste time go take going to take it. But it was a real clean win of a piece. I didn't yeah. see really much you could do. <laughs> Uh, and I was yeah. kind of hoping that you could, um, like in the, in the in the second game after after knight back to c6, uh, I was really hoping that you would catch with your queen and not play e5, d5 there, uh, because your queen right. is getting stuck a bit on b7. But after the game, I saw that you can just play e5 and it's just fine. You can play play your queen back to e4 later. Uh, like in the yeah, I was looking at that line I takes, and then my queen has to go to b7 after yeah. that. It looked it looked playable, but probably <laughs> not uh, practically the best decision. No, probably not. But still, uh, like I have literally nothing to throw at your queen, so it's nothing right. to worry about. Uh, <laughs> but the, the... I do have to tell you, you'll see on the video later, but I completely missed after e5 later on, um, and knight takes e5. I thought I could play knight takes e5 directly there. Um, yeah, yeah, and I thought after d takes e5, I could play queen takes d8. Uh -huh. But that was a total hallucination. So bishop takes h7 was not planned. I just happened to have that resource. That was so, so freaking annoying. But I, I, I realized that <laughs> I was into a mess right there. But I, I said on my uh, my video here that he's probably going for a sacrifice on h7 at some point, but I don't know when. And boom, right after I said it, you just <laughs> going for it. And it was really nice. Yeah. Play. But I thought after queen h4 check uh, and king g6, I didn't I didn't really see knight to knight captures e5 check there. I I just really yeah I I just considered queen g5. Um, but it's still okay. Hopeless. So I was wondering why you played king g6 king g6 instead of king g8. Yeah, that just leaves mate or rook down. I was hoping that I could I get something out of it if I played king to g6. Yeah, I was spending some time on uh, king g8, knight takes e5, and then queen c2. Yeah, and still, um... granted, I mean you're still totally lost, but you can try to attack my queen side. But I think I can play knight d3. There was the thing. Yeah. So, like, what I was uh, at least uh, looking at in that position was, if I play my king to g6 and you play your queen to g5 check, and I bring my king back to mm -hmm. h7, um, I could. Uh, I thought to myself. Uh, before playing it, that I might have a chance of getting my queen back to c1 with a mate threat, but no, you cover that screen mm. too. I I finally uh, found out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and I wouldn't do queen g5. I guess I I could if I technically wanted to, but no reason to allow uh, my queen getting off of that diagonal leaning towards your rook. No, but the like uh, queen that, g5, the queen h5. The same. Are you talking about queen g5, queen h5? Or like, why would I play queen g5? It wasn't queen h4. Sorry? So, you, after you, king g6. After king g6, then queen g5 check. Yeah, I don't get why I would play that move, though. Uh, but you... Because your queen was on h4, right? Yeah. But, like, what What was the point of queen g5? It's, it's is what I'm a, saying. It's still the same threat, although it delays it for one more move. Right, but again, why would I play that move? No, <laughs> like, why not just play knight takes e5 right away? Exactly, that's what uh, surprised me because I didn't realize that you had knight takes e5 right away. <laughs> no, like I'm just saying from my perspective, it doesn't make sense to play queen g5 because why would I no. force your king back to h7 when it's already exposed on g6? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that's what I mean. Like, yeah, okay, so you just missed knight takes e5, but yeah, um, yeah, um, I guess king g8 is the better try, but it still looks pretty pretty lost. Yeah, it, it really did. Um, and so in the first game, um, I was really down on time there, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I was so <laughs> I was so pressured as well. Like I had literally no time left. 
And I thought to myself, I could play bishop to d7 uh, or d2, so e2, sorry, um, in that final position or capture with my pawn and just give up a piece and resign. So that's what I did. But I could play on, but that pawn would be become such a strong uh, pawn on d3 that I wouldn't really want to play on anyways. Right, um, right. But what is your Yeah, I was commenting that? that I thought the opening wasn't so good for you because... It just seemed like you were lacking a plan going into the middle game. Yeah, that's true. Because um, I found that queen c2 is kind of nice. But after bishop b4, b5, I don't realize... I, I don't think I have much. So I should have just played d3 um, mm -hmm. first. Just getting my... Yeah, and also, queen c2 isn't really necessary. Because I'm not threatening knight takes e4 there due to no. queen a4 check. No, true. Um that is actually true. That is an opening trap. Some of you guys might want to look up, but <laughs> check it out. It's really just an easy tactic, but that is an opening trap that some might fall into. Like me with queen yeah. e4. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. So I think the queen did turn out to be misplaced there due to uh, all the c-file stuff, since you had a hard time playing d4. I kind of think you need to get in d4 if you're going to play a system like that. Yeah, and that um, was what it, I was... It thinking. never quite works. I was aiming for that, but I needed my queen off of the C file anyway, so that's how why it didn't work. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're totally correct. Um, right. So if you would sum up these games, um, how would you compare me to like, like let's say um, a total uh, new player? If if I had played this <laughs> game for like two weeks, would you consider that to be uh, like? That's how a two weeks into chess player play. Oh, no, of course not. You're way stronger than that. All right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's hard when you have a big rating mismatch like this. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think in the first game, you were hampered by the fact that you really had a hard time finding a plan, and you hence like sp spent a lot of time trying to do something, yeah. and there wasn't really a whole lot to do. Um, I definitely think you played a little bit loose. So yes. of course in the second game with the piece drop, but maybe you actually maybe actually you're oscillating between playing too passive and then too loose in the second game, because yeah. um, the the first game felt like yeah you had a a solid position out of the opening, but once we got into the middle game it was so tough to do anything that um, even I was struggling to offer any advice for you uh, <laughs> once I got the bishop pair. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay, um, so it might be good for you to like try to beef up some of your opening knowledge, looking yeah. into like the white side of the Sicilian a bit more. I know, I know you play a number of different things in the opening, but it might help streamline things more and give you more confidence in the middle game if you increase your knowledge there. That's totally true. Uh, like I was saying in the first video, that um, so he's probably going to play the Sicilian, and boom, yes, there you go. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> sure if you were going to play e4, but. I had a feeling it was probably going to be e4. Yeah, you've just um, wanted me to play d4 for such a long time that I wanted to play e4 again. Um, <laughs> so, yep. yeah. And I remember our games at the train station, I think you were playing e4 almost exclusively with white. Yeah, I, I, I really like the positions uh, that arises after e4, e5, or anything other than the Sicilian. So the Sicilian right. was really a great choice for you there. <laughs> I would have crushed right, you if right. not. Definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. I mean, it, it was really tough with this rating mismatch and playing um, while also recording yourself and commenting on the moves. Yeah, totally. So, uh, but I, I know I, you can play way better than like in the second game, for instance. <laughs> That's good to hear. But I, I, really, <laughs> I really just had a lot of fun uh, doing this. Uh, it, it is a project for me just to get to play stronger players. Uh, and being able to just try to uh, see how long I can last. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to win these games at all. But it's really fun just to watch how long I can actually last. And you, you are the strongest player that I've ever, ever played in. Like, uh -huh. I, uh, well, maybe not actually. I, I played Simon Agdestein, if you know who that is. Oh yeah, yep, Norwegian Norris Grandmaster, fourth, third or fourth uh, greatest player. Magnus's old coach, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, but and then famous uh, soccer player as well. Yeah, true, true. You you know your Norwegian stuff, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he he and I played when I was like fourteen years old 
13 or 14. So that doesn't really count, I think. And it was like a mm-hmm. three-minute game or something. But anyways, I, I am going to ask you a personal question for the viewers. Sure. So here it goes. How is your dating life going? <laughs> so that's an extension of my uh, my switch in the channel content I was teasing people with. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been going well. I'm not seeing anyone right now. So just dating around and um, yeah, I'm not attached at the moment, but uh, I have absolutely no complaints in that department. So that's good yeah. to hear. So everyone out there, please look up John. He might be on Tinder even. Do you have a Tinder profile? Well, I don't know. Like these, these videos are 97% male, at least according to my YouTube statistics. So <laughs> that's, true, um, that's true, but that's 3% off, isn't it? Yeah. You never know, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, do you have no, like in the chess community, I've never like, I've dated, never dated like a woman in the chess community or anything. I tend to keep that, that separate, like my personal life and my yeah. work chess life. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Although it would be nice, wouldn't it, to have uh, an actual companion to travel with as well, like another... Uh, could be, player. yeah. I know there are a lot of chess couples, in, including some extremely strong chess couples, Yeah. like GMs, IMs, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, chess is such like an isolating thing where when you're in the midst of a, especially an over-the-board tournament, like a really intense over-the-board tournament... I could see the benefit of like having a partner who knows what you're going through and is maybe going through the same thing yeah. in that same tournament as well. Exactly. Because otherwise, it does seem kind of odd. Like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna go spend seven days like playing a tournament where you play <laughs> one game per day, and it's just like hours and hours of stress. Like, not a lot of people can identify with that. But yeah, if they're a chess player themselves, I could see the appeal of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, thank you so much for joining in and playing. These yeah, games yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I know you have to run, so I'm not gonna exploit any more of your time. But have a good day. No worries, Mark. Yeah, you um, as well. And um, it'll be interesting to see what people have to say on both of the the commentaries here. That would be really weird. Um, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, we, we'll we'll talk later as well. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, All right, man. Bye. <laughs> yep. Have a good night. Bye. All right, there you go, guys. That's what that's John Bartholomew. He's a really nice guy. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and also look out for my Twitch channel. I'm going to stream there regularly. I'm already doing that. But yeah, these two games caught me off guard, uh, as they should, versus a, such, such a strong player. But still, I really, really didn't play that the best way possible. Thank you guys. Bye.